Hello, and welcome to the first installment of the Criminology Chronicles. Uh, I am Dr. Samantha Blemba, uh, and I decided to start this um, sort of, I guess, mini series uh, within my channel because it's. I find that when I'm doing my classes, uh, we come up with some, we have some fun conversations and discussions, and and we come up with some interesting things. And so I kind of thought that maybe it would be fun to share those things beyond my classroom. And because I prepare for those classes, you know, I'm all in the right headspace. So I figure maybe I should share them while um, everything's fresh in my brain and while um, it, it's relevant. And um, often we're talking about very timely things in my classes. So uh, I thought I would start sharing them in this uh, series, the Criminology Chronicles. And, um, so yeah, so I thought we would start today uh, with the very first one talking uh, about just crime rates. And so I was looking through this in my, so I have a homicide seminar this semester. And so we were talking about this in my homicide class um, because it's interesting to see what is essentially happening in the US when we look at crime rates. So what we have here is the FBI's Crime Data Explorer, which you can find just going by to um, fbi.gov slash CDE, and you can find that. Uh, and so the, the most recent year is 2022, because I mean, we are just into 2024 at this point. So, um, we don't have 2023 data yet, but essentially, first of all, keep in mind that this is FBI data. So this is reported crime. So this is not going to tap into the unreported crime, which is something that like say the NCVS does, which if you don't know what that is, I do have a lecture video all about the NCVS and the UCR and all those things. Um, <clears throat> but for our purposes today, just keep in mind that this is um, this is our reported crime things that go to the FBI. So that being said, this is kind of a fun tool you can use. Uh, so here we can see, um, so right off the bat here, this is just all violent crime is what's selected right now. And the default is to start from, you know, give you a 10 year span. So we can look at this, <coughs> excuse me, and this is basically we can see, oh, well, you know, there's been dips and it's going up and, oh, look at what's happening. This is problematic. But when we put this in context, if we go back as far as this data tool goes, which is 1985, gives us a lot more context of what's actually happening with violent crime in America. So we can see there were there was this major peak that happened in the 80s. There was also a similar peak in the 70s, which we can't go back to because the data doesn't go back that far. But we can look at this and see. What was happening in the 80s and early 90s, the last major peak was actually this kind of 1991 peak that all crime has kind of been generally on the decline since then. There's a lot of speculation about why 1991 or what happened then or what have you, but that's essentially just the last peak when we look statistically. And so looking at what's happening kind of in these last couple of years, it doesn't seem as big of a problem, I guess, comparatively as when we zoom in and look at it, you know, only looking at the past. 10 years or so, it looks a lot different. Uh, so this is very similar to when we, so specifically in my homicide class, we were talking about, of course, homicide. So looking at the rates of homicide. Now, this is interesting because the homicide rates have gone up much more significantly than uh, violent crime in general. But even so, we can still see that it is nowhere near the rates that we saw in the 80s and the early 90s with that 1991 peak being the last major peak. Um, and so, yes, this is absolutely problematic. What has been happening since about 2015 um, when things sort of have started to increase? And then we had this leap here, uh, which notice... 2020, 2021, those are some of the highest rates we've seen. Uh, I can't tell from this data, but my opinion um, as to what's going on, my professional opinion as to what's probably going on here is that we saw peaks um, and increases of certain types of violent crime during COVID, especially uh, domestic violence. And, uh, but then also you saw things like during COVID, it was, um, it, the idea of anomy, which is essentially societal chaos and, you know, people are following the rules and what's supposed to happen isn't happening anymore. And that's kind of what happened during COVID is we had this period of anomy. And so there were some increases that sort of happened there. And um, that combined with sort of some of the, the racial tensions that we've been having in the in recent years and the political divides and, um, you know, an increase in in. Um, you know, just general animosity between people. Uh, that may be partly to 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 you know 
explain what's happening here. Um, and I know that you know domestic violence increasing. We're going to see increases in homicide uh, that happens in domestic and intimate partner situations. So that may be. This is just me hypothesizing, but um, certainly there's something that's been going on here. But again, what put in larger context, it actually is nowhere near the rates that we were seeing in the 80s and the 70s um, and since that 1991 peak. We are not back to that yet. Um, keep in mind, these are rates. And so these are per 100,000. So for example, when we're talking about the highest rate in this within this context here, we've got that 1991 peak was 9.8. That's the highest we've seen. So we are up to about 6.8, which is in, which is important. Keep in mind, look at this, look at this scale. This is sort of when you're reading data and to read it appropriately, note that this scale does not start at zero. It starts at four. So this difference is not, we are not looking at half the rate. We are looking at 6.8. So it's approaching back to that 9.8, but it is still, that is a significant difference when we're talking about a per 100,000 rate. So this is concerning, absolutely. Um, the fact that it's going down again is encouraging, but we absolutely need to be sort of addressing what's happening here, especially because violent crime does not have that same jump that we saw. Um, however, keep in mind, this is also nationally. So if we want to change this, we can look uh, from state to state. Uh, so some interesting things. So for example, let's take a look at California, what's happening with California with all violent crime. Um, it actually pretty much mirrors this. So this is the the uh, state, the across the US rate here, and then the blue is the uh, California rate. And so it's a little bit higher, but that's kind of always been the case is that the California rate is slightly higher or significantly higher in some cases um, than the looking across the US. But let's see, let's let's take, uh, I don't know, what were we looking at in class, like Texas. Um, very similar. It's It essentially mirrors what's happening across the country. And part of that has to do with when we look at population. But then you look at something like Montana, which has a much lower population. And so you see kind of major differences here. It is not following the U.S. rate really at all. Uh, and in fact, it's actually higher over here when it has been significantly lower historically. So that's an interesting trend too. So, I mean, we, we don't want to, we don't want to dig too deep into essentially what's happening, um, you know, state by state and, and try to guess about why that might be. There are multiple possible reasons. There are so many variables at play here, but it is interesting to see. And I will also show you one more thing that we thought was awesome, I guess, hilarious, interesting, however you want to gauge it. Um, where are we? Oh yeah, Florida. Um, so first of all, if we look at Florida just in general, look at all violent crime, it's pretty comp comparable. We look at homicide, um, similar kind of peaks, but then a real dip here in 2021. So there, there's some things going on there. But interestingly, when we were just playing around during class, um, this came up. Look at arson. And what happened here. This is so, I don't know what going, what's going on here. I mean, this is 2020, enemies in place, but I mean, this is something that we didn't see. So like if we check out another state, let's look at, I don't know, Georgia, um, since we're going close to Florida, we did not see that so when we're looking at specifically at arson. Uh, so I don't know what it is about arson in Florida in 2020, but something happened there where it jumped exponentially and then dropped back down. So I don't know if this might have been a an enforcement thing where suddenly they were cracking down on arson cases or there was a rash of them and it was like interconnected cases. I don't know. But um, it was interesting. And this came up during my class. And as you can imagine, the class reacted like, what? What is happening? Um, but I mean, we're back down to the pre 2020 levels already. So I, I don't know. I don't know what happened in 2020 in Florida when it comes to arson, but people were setting fires for whatever reason. Um, so I encourage you, if you're interested, go check out this tool, the, the, the FBI, the crime data explorer. It's, it's kind of fun to see what's going on and compare nationally. Um, and we can look at like things like arson nationally, um, robbery, rape, uh, all the sort of big crimes, we can see what's happening. Um, this, they actually changed how they were measuring it. So they're, these you have to kind of take with a grain of salt in terms of how these measurements have changed because they're measuring it differently, which is going to change the data that you get um, specifically for rape. Um, but it's interesting to kind of see um, 
and even things like property crimes they're up a little bit but when we look historically they are still generally on the decline so this i sort of wanted to start um with our first criminology chronicle on uh, doing this because this is a major misconception that the public has is that all crime is go is going up and people are afraid because crime is on the rise and certainly certain types of crimes we're seeing problems like apparently arson in florida in 2020 was a big problem uh, but generally overall crime is still lower than it has been historically so we should not be panicking the way we are although looking at homicide and seeing this increase that is problematic we do need to be addressing that something is happening there there are probably again multiple things at play but um we should not be we should not be using this as you know any kind of whether political rhetoric or what have you about things going crazy and out of control because they are not crime in general especially looking at all violent crime is on the decline and it has been since the early 90s and that is something that i wanted to sort of address that misconception that the public seems to have um, certainly gallup polls have shown that people think that crime is on the rise um, and they think that you know things are going crazy and, and worse than they've ever been and what have you and uh and it simply is not and so that's something i wanted to sort of start with and um but there will be more of these criminology chronicles so please tune in for more of those